بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين اللهم انفعني بما علمتني وعلمني بما ينفعني وزدني علما إنك العليم الحكيم اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأفتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم اللهم ارزقني نعمة الإخلاص لوجهك الكريم بكل ما أقول وبكل ما أفعل آمين رب العالمين My second lecture about about the quality in the context of the chest imaging made easy course. In the quality of the chest X-ray before interpreting the chest X-ray, we include the following points. The, these points of in, inclusion, artifact, exposure, penetration, inspiratory effort, rotation, angulation, and magnification. Artifact, artifactual appearance seen on the chest X-ray can be due to radio, radiographic technique or patient factors or the presence of external or internal non-anatomical objects as seen in the medical equipment. As you see here in this patient, this patient, female patient, we have a streak-like artifact on the right above, above chest and this is simulating the subcutaneous emphysema. But actually, this is a female patient, and this is due to artifact from the hair. Inclusion, chest X-ray should include the entire thoracic cage. Occasionally, important anatomical structures are not included. If the clinical question can still un be answered, then require requiring another image is not necessary. As we see here is in this patient, we have the costophrenic angle are not included in the chest X-ray and the upper apex it is not included and some of the lateral wall it is not included. So this is this chest X-ray it is not acceptable. And here the same patient after, after taking the entire anatomical structures of the thoracic cage. But here there is another artifact or another abnormality, and uh, uh, not abnormality, another critic. Here the scapula, it is overlying the chest, overlying the lungs. And the another patient and the scapula should be away away from the lungs as we see in the previous structure how to position the hands on the waist of the patient exposure slash penetration it is assessed by looking at the lower thoracic vertebral bodies whose outline should be visible on the VA view. The spine should be seen through the heart. Bone penetration, pulmonary vessels, and interstitial marking appear more prominent. Loss of detail of the lung bases and vertebra result in increased density. As we see here in this patient, this patient is underexposed and we cannot see the lungs and the, the heart and the spine. And this patient, it is overventilated and we see the loss of details of the lung bases and also the vertebra, it is more prominent. And here, this is the correct position, the correct 
exposure of the patient. Here, under overcorrect. Inspiratory effort, anterior aspect of at least six ribs must be noted above the dome of the right diaphragm. Alternatively, posterior aspect at least nine to 10 ribs should be visualized. Poor inspiratory effort, the cardiac shadow may be a bit enlarged, a crowding of the blood vessels as we noticed in the previous lecture. Here, this patient has poor inspiratory effort, and we see here some obesity, as we see here in the left base, and this is the three anterior ribs. And this is the same patient after taking deep inspiration, and this is the six anterior ribs, and there is no suspected consolidation on the left lung base. Here, another patient, we have, we have uh, poor inspiratory effort on this patient. We have one, two, three, four anterior ribs, and we have shadowing of overlying the lung bases, as we see in the previous structure, and the patient, the same patient with inspiratory effort, it is, there is nothing of this shadowing, and this simulating infection, and also poor inspiratory effort simulating cardiac enlargement. Poor inspiratory effort on the chest X-ray can be lead to cardiomegaly, can lead to high level abnormalities and aberrant abnormalities in the mediastinal contour. Also, the lung bone can tend to be increased density simulating white lung and cannot rule infection. And this lead to misinterpretation. Rotation of the patient, thoracic spinal sepulchres are equidistant from the medial end of each clavicle on the frontal image. As we see here in this patient, this is the spinal sepulchres of the lower cervical spine and the upper dorsal spine and equidistant from medial end of the clavicles. The medial end of the clavicles, how to assist the patient rotation. The medial, as we said, the medial end of the clavicles should be equidistant from the spinal process of the vertebral body. And if it is not equal, either the patient, it is rotated either to the right or to the left. Here, this is the schematic review, uh, schematic uh, drawing about the how the patient is rotated. And here we see, this is the anterior part, this is the back of the patient, and there is no rotation of the patient. Here, this is the right side, and here, this is the left side. And here, this is the right side, it is more distance away from the cassette or imaging receptor, and so this is the patient rotated to the right side. And here, the the left on the left side this distance is, is more away from the from away from the cassette more than the right side so this the patient is rotated to the left side the rotation of the patient can uh, uh, lead to uh, abnormalities in the normal thoracic abnormalities like uh, the heart barenchyma and the mediastinum, and even also the trachea. Here we have patient, uh, we see here the median end of the clavicle, and here the median end of the left clavicle, and here the patient is rotated to the left side. And here, the patient, this is the median end of the clavicle, and this is the median end of the clavicle on the right side, and this is here the position of the spinal sepulchres, and here this is the patient, it is rotated to the right side. Here, as again, we concentrate on this, medial end of the clavicle, medial on the, on the clavicle, 
and we see here the distance is more on the left side than on, th this is the equal distance here and then probably central patient and here you see here the distance between the median on the clavicle on the left side and the median on the clavicle side on the right side are not the same and it is larger on the right side and this is the patient it is rotated to the right side and we have decrease in the cardiac size here if the b distance is more between the median on of the clavicle on the left side and more than the distance between the spinal subosis and the median on the clavicle on the right side and we have increase in the cardiac size and we see some examples here the patient with uh, this is the spinal subosis median end of the clavicle on the right side and median end of the clavicle on the left side the patient is rotated to the left side we have false cardiac enlargement, widening of the mediastinum, and obliteration of the left, left costophrenic angle, as we see here in the schematic view. Another patient, we, we have also rotation to the left side, patient rotated to the, patient rotated to the left side, and we see here also uh, the trachea is shifted to the right side by the by the by thyroid enlargement, and also here we see obliter uh, pseudo obliteration of the pseudo obliteration of the left costophrenic angle. Here another patient with uh, rotation to the left side and with cardiac enlargement. And here, this is a patient with uh, uh, how the rotation affect the uh, how the patient affect how the rotation affect the on the cardiac uh, on the aorta. And here we see the small aorta on the on the on rotation to the left side and large aorta in the rotation to the right side. And this is the normal patient. With angulation, the median end of the clavicle should be projected over the posterior third or fourth ventricle of the fourth ribs, and the clavicle will, should be in shape. And if it is that there is angulation toward the head, we have abnormal orientation of the clavicle, and the patient also abnormal orientation of the ribs. With magnification in the patient with AB view, we have magnification and also have cardiac enlargement. We should uh, concentrate on the patient protection, on the patient X ray, and uh, the radiation dose from the chest X ray it is about 0.1 mainly sievert and it is uh, equal to about uh, uh, between 3 to eight, 15 days uh, uh, background duration depend on the country. On the chest CT scan we have 7 millisievert and the bone scan is about 10 millisievert, which CT scan is about 25 millisievert. And here we should radiation protection to the gonads in the patient with lateral chest X-ray and uh, also patient uh, rotation, patient radiation protection to the female, to the hair gonads on the BA view, and patient radiation protection in male patient to the his uh, gonads on the BA view of the male patient. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu Thank you for listening and hoping to see you soon in the third lecture, inshallah.